thank you for that kind introduction. I'm Susan Zook, and I'm from the Office of Policy for Pharmaceutical Quality. I'm the lead of FDA's Inactive Ingredient Database, also known as the IID. The IID has been around for 30 plus years, but this year we've made some significant enhancements that will benefit applicants. So today I want to focus on those IID enhancements. What are those big changes? Well, we've adopted new data standards that improve accuracy and consistency in the IID. We've added transparency, and by that I'm referring to a new feature called the quarterly IID change log. We've added excipient daily exposure levels to the IID with a new value called the maximum daily exposure. Maximum daily exposure now provides a new tool that applicants can use to support the levels of excipients when filing an ANDA. Our learning objectives in this segment are to cover those recent IID enhancements, to better understand IID data and terminology as it's currently used, to identify those new changes, to learn about the new change log and how to read it, and to understand how FDA calculates maximum daily exposure. Now before diving into IID basics, I think it's good to know what information is available in the IID and where to find it. The link provided at the bottom of this slide will take you to the IID webpage where you can find the IID, which is a searchable list that contains excipients used in FDA-approved drugs. You can also find on that same page the change log. And the image in the background shows you the IID's searchable list. And in the foreground, you can see what the change log looks like. You can also find answers to frequently asked questions on the, same, on the IID uh, web page. In 2019, we published a draft guidance on how to use the IID, and that can be find on, found on the FDA's guidance webpage. Let's start with IID basics. What information can you find in the IID? When you search for an excipient, what you get is all of the records that are associated with that excipient. The image shown here is a search that I did uh, using the search term alpha tocopherol. My search yielded all of the records associated with that term. Now the first thing that I'd like to point out on in my search is the excipient names. The excipient names in the IID are the preferred terms for that excipient that are assigned by FDA's substance registration system. The substance registration system also assigns a code to that term called a UNI. The, the preferred terms, the CAS numbers, and the UNIs in the IID all come from the substance registration system. Now you'll notice that there are many records associated with my search term. Each row in the IID is a unique record. And a record consists of three elements, the excipient name, the, its route of administration, and dosage form. For each record, there's a numeric value, and that numeric value is the highest level of that excipient used in approved products for that route of administration and dosage form. The column labeled maximum potency shows you the highest level of the excipient that has been used in a single dosage unit. In July of 2020, we introduced a new term, maximum daily exposure. Now the maximum daily exposure is the amount of the excipient that would be taken or used over a 24 hour period by the patient. If the patient were to be given the highest amount um, that's permitted per the product labeling. You can see that the record for alpha tocopherol in the center of the slide uh, for the oral route of administration in a tablet a film coated dosage form has a maximum daily exposure 
a level rather than maximum potency. The last thing that I want to point out is the last column. The last column in the IID is where we flag records that are new. Now we flag a record as being new if it's a brand new a combination of excipient, route of administration, and dosage form. But we also flag the record as being new with the y, a Y for yes if we've now published a higher level, a higher numeric value associated with that record. That's also considered new. I want to remind everybody that the excipients in the IID come from NDAs and ANDAs. We have not um, included excipients used in BLAs in the IID. The first change that was made, and this was made in July of 2019, was that we adopted new data standards. And by data standards, I mean we adopted a new system of controlled terminology for routes of administration and dosage forms. The terminology we use was taken from Structured Product Labeling, also called SPL. By adopting this new data standard, we were able to make the IID records more consistent and the standardization shrank the database. In fact, it shrank it from about 14,000 records to about 9,300 records. So it was a big change. Details about these standards uh, can be found on the IID webpage at the link at the bottom of the slide. Once we had new data standards in place, we could work on those enhancements to the IID. And last October 2019, we published the first quarterly IID change log. The change log shows users the records that have been deleted or corrected since the previous publication. The initial change log was in a PDF format and the uh, spreadsheet-like um, image in the bottom, back of the slide shows you what the original change log looked like. But in June of 2020, we switched to an interactive searchable format for the change log that's similar to the IID itself. Now, the, the change log shows the what and the why of specific changes. The change log shows which records have changed and how they have changed. Recall that a record is a combination of the excipient name, the route of administration, and dosage form. There are three types of changes um, that can occur to a record. Deletions, corrections, and MDE replacements. Let me explain each of these types of changes. Deletions. When a record appears in the change log as a deletion, that means that the, a correction has been made and there's no replacement for that record. The record will no longer appear in the IID. The, the deletion, the, the deleted record that I'm displaying here was an obvious error and we removed it from the IID. I want to point out that you can see the last quarter in which that uh, deleted record appeared. And here we, it shows it as quarter two. And the status of the record will be listed as a deletion. Corrections. A record may be listed as corrected for a couple reasons. The majority of corrected records are records for which the potency was incorrect and we corrected the potency with a lower potency. If the potency is lowered due to a correction, the record, the before and after picture of the record will be shown in the change log. And here I have a screenshot, and you can see that the potency for benzyl alcohol was corrected from 3.1% to 1.55%. The previous and qu current quarter uh, records are shown, and the status is listed as corrected. Another reason that a record might appear as a corrected record is when we correct the excipient name. And here I'm showing a, a screenshot of a name that was corrected in, the th in quarter three. The uh, old name for this 
ingredient was sodium starch glycolate potato. We had the vegetable uh, source included. And in the current quarter, we've removed that vegetable source from all of those records. And so it shows up as a correction. So that leads me to our first challenge question. I mentioned that in the change log, we list records for which the potency has been lowered when we corrected that record. What do you think happens if a record is replaced with a higher potency? Do you, re do you recall? Well, if you said that the record will be flagged with a Y as new in the primary IID page, you're right. Records corrected with lower potencies appear in the change log, whereas records replaced with higher potencies will appear with a Y flag on the primary web page, uh, IID page. They won't appear in the change log. So let me get to that last category of changes. MDE replacements. This is the newest item in the quarterly change log. We first displayed MDE replacements in July of 2020. MDE replacements show the excipient records that have for the first time um, shown an MDE instead of a, a maximum potency. If the rec in the record shown here, you can see that where the MDE previously had a maximum potency, and now has a maximum daily exposure. The last topic I want to cover is how FDA calculates maximum daily exposure. Where does that come from? I'm displaying on this slide our calculation for excipient maximum daily exposure. Now this is automated in our system. You can see from this calculation that you must know the maximum daily dose, the MDD, of the drugs in which the excipient is used in order to calculate maximum daily exposure. And the maximum daily exposure is the maximum daily dose divided by the amount of active ingredient per unit dose multiplied by the amount of the inactive ingredient per unit dose. For clarity, we use the term maximum daily exposure, but for oral products, this is also called maximum daily intake. So let me show you an example of how this calculation is used. This is a simple example and in a made up product, an oral tablet X that has a maximum daily dose of 300 milligrams a day. If uh, the strength, the tablet strength, A, is 150 milligrams, and each tablet contains 10 milligrams of excipient A, then the maximum daily exposure to excipient A would be 20 milligrams. And of course, maximum daily dose divided by the amount of the active ingredient per unit gives you the number of doses. So what we're doing here is we're multiplying the number of doses by the amount of the inactive ingredient or excipient per unit dose, and that gives you MDE. So now that you know about MDE, you might be wondering how is this going to help an applicant? Maximum potency, the excipient level that for years has exist existed in the IID, only shows applicants the amount of the excipient per one unit dose. But the FDA evaluates the acceptability of the excipient levels in a product based on patient exposure. So there's always been this gap for generic applicants, uh, some an uncertainty about the total exposure to the excipient in Ananda and whether that level will be acceptable to the FDA. With the, um, with the addition of maximum daily exposure, applicants can now see how much uh, of an excipient FDA has permitted on a daily basis. And that, that level can now be used um, to, as a reference when filing an ANDA. 
MDE will replace maximum potency in the IID. You'll see more MDEs in future publications of the IID. And as we add more data to our master database, we expect that those MDE values will increase over time. MDE will typically be displayed as milligrams, and you can assume that that is milligrams per day. In summary, now you know that we adopted new standards in July of 2019, and IID began reporting the quarterly changes in each quarterly publication in October of 2019. That quarterly change log identifies three types of changes, deletions, corrections, and MDE replacements. New entries will be flagged with a Y, and that includes higher potencies. The IID began reporting MDE in July of 2020, and we expect that more MDEs will appear in future publications of the IID. If you have questions about the IID or you want to tell us that something needs to be corrected, you can write to us at the uh, mailbox listed at the top of the slide. If you have questions about those preferred terms for excipients or you think that something's incorrect, you can write to the substance registration staff at the mailbox listed in the middle of the slide. And if you have questions about excipients that are being used in a generic product under development, you can send those questions as controlled correspondence. And there, I have a link to the controlled correspondence guidance at the bottom of the slide that tells you how to do that. And with that, I thank you for listening. Of course, many, many people help me with the IID and everything that has to go into making improvements. So I thank them. Thanks for listening.